Hey there, I'm Robert Nirvimihio and welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you is in good shape as you go through this lecture video. And if you like the way the details were discussed in this video, please don't forget to share and like this video. Leave your impression on the comment section and hit the bell notifications to get updates on the succeeding lectures that we will be uploading and click subscribe. And now, get your pen and notes, wear your headphones, and grab a snack if you want, and let's start our video lecture. Ready? And go! Hello everyone! Another disciplinal perspective that we will be considering in our discussion of understanding the cell will be the field of psychology. And with this topic, you will be expected to demonstrate critical and reflective thought in analyzing the different psychological theories in the study of the cell. Expound the self as a cognitive construction and examine the self as a proactive and agentic. The psychology of self focuses on the representation of an individual based on his or her experiences. We actually often do this every time we talk. We actually wanted to talk about our own experiences even though we sometimes deny that we don't want to talk about it. Even at times when we hear people talk about their experiences, sometimes we cannot help but relate their shared experiences into our own experiences. In psychology, oneself is a representation of our experiences from our environment. For William James, there is a distinction between the self as the knower or the I and the self as the known or the me-self. William James differentiated these two where he described the I as one's pure ego or the consciousness itself, while the me being the known is one of the many things the I may be conscious of, and the me comprises the material self, social self, and spiritual self. The material self consists of things that belongs to us or that we belong to. Like when you left your phone at home, you feel like you cannot go on with the day without having your phone with you since it is like the, your phone is attached to your body already. So what you do is to return home and get your phone. Our social self is who we are in a given social situation. Well, William James is a functionalist, and being a functionalist, he stands in the position that it is not the experience itself, but it is how the individual reacts to his environment. And having a social self as one component of the me makes us display different actions depending on the situation. Yes, indeed, that you may be the most jolly, talkative, and outgoing person when you are hanging out with your friends in public, but would you still display the same character when you and your friends decide to attend the church? For sure, your actuations inside the church will not be the same as the way you act outside. So in that sense, James believed that we are indeed having lots of social self as we are faced also with too many social situations. Our spiritual self, on the other hand, pertains to who we are at our core. Our personality, values, and conscience is part of it and this is considered to be more permanent and unchanging as compared to the material self and social self. The perspective of Karen Horney and Carl Rogers revolves around the idea of the real and the ideal self-concept. Well, for Karen Horney, a person's self-concept is formed out 
of one society and the formed idealized and real self are just one of those strategies to cope up with basic anxiety. Due to the feeling of inferiority, a person develops what we call an idealized self-image where one creates a picture of themselves as a possessor of unlimited power and superlative qualities. While the actual self is the us in our everyday life, the real self will be revealed when one already starts to develop techniques to deal with anxiety. Like, for example, the situation and danger that we are facing in this pandemic time as our actual self, well, we cannot also help that at a certain point, we imagine how wonderful it will be to have an invincible body that can repel the COVID virus from contaminating our body. And that imagination talks about our idealized self-image. But because of the impending danger that the COVID-19 is providing, we also manage to find ways to strengthen our defenses to avoid our body to encounter the virus through observing health protocols like wearing face masks or face shield and then frequent hand washing. With such action, the real self gets into surface. In the perspective of Carl Rogers, the real self pertains to who we actually are while the ideal self revolves around goals and our ambitions in life. Let's take for example the way a mother wants her daughter to be a beauty queen. And the daughter also dream of such because of her mother's influence. And that may pertain to what we call the ideal self. But in terms of the daughter's real self, she just bears a flat 5 or 4 inches in height and is a heavy-weighted girl. And also, the daughter has too many acne which is far from the ideals of a beauty queen. So in this sense, the incongruence of the real self and the ideal self may bring unhealthy personality to the person and may also lead to anxiety and distress for the two should actually be aligned with each other. So we will be talking a lot more of psychology by the next video discussion.